In this problem, we have a bicycle pump pumping up a tire. It is stroked once and the pressure reading goes from 14.7 PSI absolute to 15.7 PSI absolute. We want to find the volume of the bicycle tire when only given the pressure and the volume change. We are given a stroke length of 0.0946 meters and a diameter of the piston of 0.05213 meters. Note, I'll be subtracting 2 millimeters from the diameter measurement to account for material which we can plug into the volume of the cylinder formula, which is area of the piston times the stroke length of the piston to get the volume of the stroke. Plugging in our numbers, we get a stroke volume of 0 0.000202 meters cubed. Now we must find the volume of the hose attached to the pump. We are given a length of 0.67 meters and a diameter of 0 0.00808 meters. Plugging our numbers into the volume of a cylinder formula, we get a volume of 0 0.000034 meters cubed. Now we must find the volume of the initial state, or volume 1, in our example. We can take the volume of the tire plus the volume of the hose plus the volume of the stroke length to get volume 1. Next, to get the final state, or volume 2, we can take the volume of the tire plus the volume of the hose to get volume 2. Notice that the only difference between volume 1 and volume 2 is the volume of the stroke. So if we add volume of the stroke to volume 2, we get volume 1. This will be useful later on. Now we must use the ideal gas law, which is PV equals MRT, or in other words, absolute pressure times volume equals mass times the gas constant times the absolute temperature. A handy trick we can use is taking the ideal gas law for the initial state and dividing it by the ideal gas law for the final state. Doing so, we notice that mass, gas constant, and temperature all remain the same, so it can be reduced to a 1. So we are left with pressure 1 times volume 1 over pressure 2 times volume 2 being equal to 1. We can multiply both sides by pressure 2 and volume 2. We are left with P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. Now we want to get the formula down to one unsolved variable. So to do so, we can plug in what we found V1 to be equal to, which is V2 plus volume of stroke, into the equation. Now we want to get V2 to one side of the equation, so we can first divide both sides by P1, then subtract both sides by V2. Now we can factor out volume 2, and divide both sides by what we factored out. We are left with volume of the stroke divided by parentheses P2 over P1 minus 1 parentheses being equal to volume 2. Plugging in the volume of the stroke in pressure 2 and pressure 1, we get a volume of 0 0.00297 meters cubed for volume 2. A quick note, I use both metric and imperial in the same equation. Notice that the units get canceled out for pressure, so we can pretend that they are pascals instead of PSI if you think of metric. To check your work, you can plug in P1, V1, P2, and V2 into the P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2 equation. Both sides should give you the same value. Now to get the volume of the tire, we must subtract out what the volume of the hose is from volume 2. Doing so, we are left with the volume of the tire of 0 0.00293 meters cubed. That concludes this video. Hopefully I've earned a like, share, or subscription. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy one of these videos as well. Thank you for watching. Let me know how I'm doing in the comments down below.